Hey folks, Phil Davis, Ancestry Lens, AncestryLens.com. Folks, I'm aggravated today. I'm really aggravated. Uh, I hope you all are doing well, but uh, you know, I, 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 and it's it, my aggravation centers on something that I want to discuss, you know, with people, and it, it really is about again. Um, we, we won't have to get too much into my actual aggravation of what I'm upset about because honestly folks it, it just persists if you are a owner a boss you know like the many times that I've actually had to um, you know not my, my, my child was born um, any one of my children since I've been a business owner and land and ancestry, ancestry lands I've always had to look at this guy here. You know, you know, I'm right in front of you. You can't just let me over, but that's okay. You, you, you smoking weed, doing your thing, ain't? Right? Only to get right up in front of me. That's it. We're in Philadelphia, folks. City of supposedly brotherly love, but it's more like deadly brotherly love. Um, you know, and and you know, again, I'm gonna talk a little bit in this video, just about you know the responsibilities that we all have. There's a cost to be the boss, like James Brown said. That you gotta pay a cost to be a boss. And when you're a boss, you are responsible for the movement. You're facilitating the movement of the people who you are leading and are directing. And this could be in a home environment, this could be within an organization, or any business structure that you operate and own, from a manager to a supervisor, to a um, CEO or whatever else. And the one thing that people need is to be able to move freely in whatever modality that they are you know, operating in. If you are a wife and you're the husband, you're the leader of the family, your job is to facilitate movement through your resources that you've accumulated to allow your wife to be able to make purchases, and make decisions within that life to be able to move easily towards raising that family. You're not your wife's not supposed to be burdened with financial woes to be able to raise and feed her children, nor educate um, or provide any additional resources for them that's required to give them a good quality of life. Now we do see when these things are not met with the forward thought. Y'all see what's happening here, but okay, you know, it's gotta let people in sometimes, right? If those things are not met with a forward thought, you do have a house that has financial woes, you do have a disruption in the child's upbringing, a lack of resources in the form of good nutrition, food, and other items. You do, you do encounter that when that is not thought of and prepared for upfront. In the same way, when you own a business, you are responsible for making sure that your employees have the resources and tools in place like I've done within my business. And this is not a take on me, but this is a, this is just an example of we got to practice what we preach. I make sure that my uh, you know marketing manager has the tools in place, the resources, either in the form of CRMs or apps or AI tools or whatever we need in place to make sure that the team can operate without being restricted in their movement. Now you may not get that, but that translates into everything that you deal with in life. And when you have people who do things and it slows down a person's motion, you have to anticipate times that you as a leader may be absent. So you need to have systems and processes in place to make sure that those people's movement can be facilitated and easy, the same as if you are not there, because the absence of your presence should not be the presence, uh, I'm sorry, what is that? Um, the absence of your presence should not be presence of your absence, right? Get what I'm saying again. The absence of your presence should not be a present of your act of your absence. Let me try to say that one more time. When you're gone, all right, just because you're gone 
things should not work or, or should not should not work in the form of falling apart because you are gone. And because things are not working smoothly for what I need, and that's one of these things about these nine to five jobs that, you know, get up there, it's full of inefficiencies in the form of things that do to slow down your flow. It's just like water, man. The, the more water has things in front of it or impeding its flow, the, the more water will have resistance in flowing down smoothly. When it's a smooth line, you know, path, water flows freely. Well, that's resistance that we're talking about. Because water follows the path of least resistance. So the same thing is that we need that fluidity, which is a word that we use often in life. And that the reason why that's not done is because people do not do the upfront work of prepping. They do not get things done and prep ahead of time. You'll see people like cooks, chefs. A lot of what makes a successful cook is the fact that they do a lot of prep work, right? And when you are a leader in, in doing things within a, a family structure, you need to make sure that you have your prep work done. And not only that, you need to make sure you have systems in place that can be implemented in case you are absent. When my children are sick, my wife understands there are certain things that I've told her about, you know, hydrating them with, uh, you know, Pedialyte, electrolyte, electrolyte based hydration instead of just hydrating them with water. There are certain things when they have allergies, she has a criteria protocol of things to do and this is all internal within our household this is not uh, this is me putting medical things in place so that way we have a system set for us to utilize so she doesn't have to go feeling her way in the dark now again it's based off my medical knowledge because I'm in medicine but other people may have certain other things that they can implement within their environment the same way I do that's lateral to what I've done in medicine so again, you know, it's about creating pathways for the people that you govern, that you, um, you know, administrate to, that they have least resistance to their, the, their path to success, to achieve their outcomes, especially if you know about it. And that, that's one of the most irritating things in the world is to see business structures without clear pathways and when you're not around things fall apart because things require your approval uh, things require your signature and you do not have processes in place for when you're gone great job guy you're gonna get right in front of me only to stop like you know okay like this is just ridiculous okay like there's not a mass amount of traffic right and folks I'm leaving the Philadelphia area you know, headed back to, you know, my county outside of the city on my way home early from work, aggravated. Communication is also something that is part of a system. I tell my wife all the time, you need to have clear and concise communication. When I have things that I need done, I make sure I communicate one very early. It's concise. I have this on this date at this time. People may forget, but when I go back and I do it more than once, it's also called repeating. You see that in marketing, the rule of three, repeating things three times, having three messages, you know, that, that whole rule. You can find that on other videos. I'm not going to go into it, nor talk about someone else has that that's out there. The rule of three with marketing. But again, you make sure you communicate enough, you reiterate and you speak concisely because you don't want to give a long spiel on something you need to do. It is, I am going here at this time for this reason on this date to do this outcome. Very clear and concise. Now, people will not remember it at the time, but they will remember you telling them, especially when you meant to mention it to them at certain intervals to remind them that it's that, that's happening. I typically always, once I know a date, try to at least give a month or several weeks in advance notice. I try to give a week's notice and I definitely try to give the day before notice because again, even if you are an employee, your leadership style is how you lead people when you interact with them, not how they interact with you. Your boss 
may interact with you, but how you interact with them sets a certain tone too as well, because they will receive you in the way that you have led them to receive you. Your leadership and communicating to them will also be how they receive you because that will be how they you know, interpret your interactions with them. If you present yourself as a very business orderly person and you're engaging someone on that, they will tend to receive you in that same manner. Because your leadership, when you interact with someone, it's just like dancing in a ballet or any kind of other one. There is a person who leads and follows and sometimes that changes throughout a dance, right? You see that in tango. The man may take the lead, he may do something else, the woman separates and she does her thing and he's waiting, he's looking for a cue to re-engage her. It is the same relationship when we have these inner office communications. And no, I'm not fired, at least today. You can see here on my left, there's a cop pulling over, so there's a reason for all this traffic. There's a cop over there to my left, he's pulling somebody over for whatever reason. It has a large flatbed with tires on the top. They are not strapped in and secured. And this is the rinky-dink stuff that you start seeing throughout the world nowadays. You know, folks, it, the way this world is going, you know, because I everyone always wants to think this is the worst time in the world. Well, you know, that could be true. But, you know, so also could have been a tough time for the pers per person to get shot by an actual bullet from a gun instead of a bow and arrow. I mean, that was a pretty rough day for them uh, when new technology came. But the first person that witnessed a trebuchet, which if anybody doesn't know, it's a form of a catapult. When that first walked up to their city doors and they were besieged by trebuchets for the first time. A French word, trebuchet. T-R-E-C-H-U-B-E-T. -E trebuchet. It's word for the day. If you don't know, learn something. And you've been brought here to learn, be educated, and enlightened. But sometimes I may not be on the entertainment one too much. But today I'm frustrated, folks. You know, for people who are go-getters, what you do not want to do in a business is impede their flow. You want to make sure that they have freedom to move and they can be in as aggressive in the room that you give them to operate in. You want them to be successful because for people like that, for people such as myself, these roadblocks due to inefficiencies or deficiencies in leadership lead to people like me becoming more frustrated because we are our motion is being impeding. Now, everyone wants us to understand that, hey, this happens, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get you. And that's also bullshit. That happens because of human inefficiency. And this is where people get slowed down. Now, if you do this over time, you get disgruntled employees because they don't feel that they have any movement. Same thing when you have a wife. If you do not allow her movement, being able to freely operate within a space which is the confines of your relationship, whatever parameters that's set in, or even a husband too, the more constricted they feel, the more that they feel that their, their movement is being impeded on. Same thing with children. Children are allowed a certain freedom, but if you just sit a baby in a room all day on a bed and you don't let them move, they will go stir crazy. Which is why a lot of people had mental um, issues or you know mental mental health issues during the uh, the pandemic or pandemic, whichever you decide is the name. They had because again their movement was slowed down, so it does mentally affect people at a certain level, at a base level. And that's something that you always have to be aware of as a leader. You want to create an environment where your people working for you or working under you can freely move and operate within a space full of confidence because that shows you have confidence in them. And if you are going to be absent, that absence of your presence should not be presence of your absence. I'm going to say that again because I think that's a profound thing people are missing throughout this. The absence of your presence should not be presence of your absence. It should not present as your absent. 
People should be able to see your business flow, whether you're there or not. It should be able to operate in a way that's efficient. So when you come back a day, two, three, four, five days later, your business is running as if you were there managing itself, which means you put the right people in the right place for the right job to perform the right task. And if it doesn't, the person that it is delegated to understands the assignment. Let me say that one more time for you. You need to put the right people in the right place for the right positions for the right time so that way they can operate the same way that you are there or not there or it can be delegated to the person so things operate smoothly. These are the systems that are in place. This is why our, our government operates. I'm not talking about the part where people are involved, but the system of government is such that if something happens to the commander in chief, the president, the next person is designed to take over. Something happened to them, the next person, the speaker of the house, takes over. It does, is designed so that our government does not break down down to the, the state level. We don't end up having feudal lord systems like we do in Japan back in the feudal area. It is to prevent that from happening. Now, you can argue how well our government is run. I will give you that. But the whole point is the structure, the system put in place is supposed to operate so everyone understands the assignment. And that is success. That is connects to my previous videos when I talked about the formula for creating generational wealth. When I talk about what's how to make a marriage successful, things you should understand. Because again, we don't speak to these issues. We don't have conversations about these issues. You wanna wonder why marriages are not working is because these conversations are not had at the dating level. We're waiting to have these conversations. Once we say, I do, we should be trying to figure out if I do or don't based upon these conversations. But that's not the conversations we're having. We're having conversations on who to vote for rather than what are your spending habits. We're not having conversations over whether you're blue or red or purple. We're, we, we don't, we have conversations on that. Hell, we're, they're talking about Trump. Trump ain't even in the office. Who cares? We got interest rates to, to talk about. Do you understand interest rates? Those are not conversations that we are taught to vet people at on a marriage level. What does your debt look like? What is your credit score? What is your ability to understand how to accumulate and grow credit? These are conversations people need to have, but you know why we don't have them? Because they're not sexy. That's not an interesting conversation, but I guarantee you if, debt, if dating was based upon that, the whole country would change. The, the bar would be not about whether you're pretty or not, or whether you got abs or you got handsome or anything else like that. Because again, most people start off with zero wealth unless they've inherited from the generation before. But even then, the person that you're with has to be equally yoked. So that way that wealth can actually be scaled up like I've talked about in previous videos. Now again, as parents, who's having that conversation with these children? Because these children will become adults. These adults will become parents. Us as parents will become grandparents. And it don't matter if you want to have children, get married, have side pieces, junior college or whatever else, you still will have to lead, mentor, or have influence over people who do have these other uh, you know, modalities which they exist within the human culture. The civilization is littered with people who've never had kids, but sometimes those people are bosses, doctors, and they mentor other young people. And I, doctors don't just talk about medicine. They talk about other things. They give counsel to other up becoming doctors about things in life. And again, who's having these conversations when it comes to relationships, human interaction? They always say, don't talk about religion, money, and politics. Why? Because again, we don't want to have hard conversations. So what, let me ask you this question. What do you do when those hard conversations come up in life? You know, I've been married to my wife for almost 10 years in April. You don't have to clap for use that do is not. And again, I, I entered in my marriage understanding that love is a fluctuating thing. 
Love, love is like mortar that bound that binds a cement. But sometimes mortar breaks down. Brick will stay longer than the mortar does. Mortar will solidify it. But like all thing adhesive breaks down. It does. It needs to be reapplied. But again, when you understand that the adhesive, the thing that sticks it together is something that has to be reapplied. It's temporary or it lasts for a certain duration of time. You don't look at love as a thing that needs to make a marriage work. I love my wife, but I didn't marry her for love. And I think my wife has come to understand that marriage needs more than love in order to persist, okay? You can get a marriage to begin because of the existence of love, but marriage cannot persist on love alone. Marriage needs to persist on building something else beyond love. Because again, if you've ever said, love, I love you to a girlfriend, if you've ever had a serious relationship, if you've ever had someone that you love for a short time, a long time, a little bit of time, or just for a fun time, you still see that love has an ending and a beginning. I, I'm sorry, a be yeah, an ending and a beginning. It's a fleeting thing. It's based upon chemicals in your body sending signals based upon whatever stimulation you have. And it's also based upon, you know, your feelings at the time. It's situational. That's why happiness is not a state of being. It's a, it's, it's a, it, well, I'm sorry. It is a state of being, but it's not a state of permanence. It's a state of being, meaning that you can be happy right now, but you may not stay happy. You could be in the happiest moment of your life and get, uh, get your leg could break and it will turn that moment into the worst moment because it's happiness is a state of being. We see animals, you know, suffer. We see suffering all around us, but we never equate that to our own lives. We have suffering in our own lives. Let me straighten this out. Anybody going to tell me in the chat this camera's crooked? And, and, and what is this? Why is that? Because most people do not want to have hard conversations. Because it, it, it requires you to do something called work. You got to work through a problem. You got to work through difficulty. Well, if anybody's been married, it don't matter whether you're married to the hottest woman on the planet or you're married to the richest man in the world. You still have to make it work. If anything, money will give you more time. But it won't give you an outcome. Jeff Bezos, it won't give you an outcome. Because even the richest man in the planet still got a divorce. Still. So if he is not above unhappiness, whether it's him or his wife, it means that none of us are any exception to the rule. Even myself and my own marriage. I am no exception to the exception. I'm not an exception to the rule that is many other people getting married. If movie stars, sexiest men on the planet, Idris Elba, and I'm not saying they're sexy, pause. I'm not saying I'm just talking about the magazine quote of them being sexy. All these other men out here have been divorced. Then again, it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not any different than anyone else. None. So I say to you again, it's because we do not want to have the hard conversations we don't want to talk about how we get through the rough times to get to the good times. We just want to stay in the good times. And when bad times come, we start changing our opinion of things. The casino is all great and good when you're gambling and you're betting on black and hitting. What happens when you, when you start losing more money, more money, more money? What happens when you bet and you lost everything? Now what do you do? Right? The casino looks like a different place. It feels different. Because the state of being has changed. So I say again, part of the problem is the problem that we do not create processes in place to make sure that when we have people working on our, ha our behalf, when we have people administering for us, because our leadership is absent at the time, but our presence should still be felt. And that's the problem. We don't have that in society. We're not teaching that in society. 
if your child if, if your children if someone says that they see a part of you and your child outside of the genetic material that they've been given but their way your way of being that means your presence is in your children and that's that's a powerful thing that means you are able to imprint some of your ideals into your children great that's a starting point again does it start with just one thing how many daughters like a sports team because their dad took them to sports how many sons like something because their parents and them used to do it right i like fishing i'm allergic to fish right but i like fishing because my father and i used to do it when we were kids let's go party boat fishing out in south jersey so again, I'm going to say to you that impression that we get from people, we're, we're, we're inheriting those ideals, those mannerisms again, but how does that help us succeed when we are older in life? That's the key we have to start figuring out. You got to start working on that. You got to teach your daughters to eliminate and vet men based upon what is their plan. You get with a guy, he's cute, great, but he's gonna get older and get gray. They get Everybody's gonna get wrinkles. And again, you're still gonna to have to live with that person when they're not as sexy or they're not as good looking as you think they are today. Someone else, they might be good looking, but Brad Pitt too has had a woman be tired of him and his stuff. Or one day he wasn't hot as he was the first day. I mean, that, that happens even when two good-looking people, whether you think, you know, Angelina Jolie or, and Brad Pitt are attractive or not, but they have the consensus to say the rule does apply. They could not be in a relationship because, again, it probably was hot and heavy, but when it came down to the details, go watch my videos again. The idea of two fine people or sexy people being together sounds good, looks good, but what do they talk about? What are they what are they playing for? What are they looking to build? You can't be in a relationship if you're not looking to build anything. Which is why even most of the times most relationships don't work cuz they're not built on anything. The only goal is to be with each other. Okay, well after you do that, then what? After you bump uglies again and you're having coitus, what else happens after that? Because like anything else, when you buy a shoe and wear it a few times, it does not have the same appeal as you see a new hot shoe sitting there on ready to be bought. So what happens after you done seen him butt naked 15 times? You done seen her upper body and lower body 14 times. Once you know what everything looks like, what do you have next? That's because you're not building anything. And maybe this is the solution on why relationships you need to get better because you're not building on anything. You want to know why people like sometimes who they work with rather than their managers? Because they're building things with them. If they have teamwork, they rely on each other. They count on each other to get through their day, to make it through work, and they rely on each other for different skill sets in order to make the, the day, whatever they got to do, go well. Right? Because they're building together. The reason why you have problems with management is because management only shows up when there's a problem or when there's an acknowledgement. But other than that, you don't build with them. You just hear their criticism. So there's always going to be a gap because there's no sweat equity involved in there. Their job is to administrate and make sure things are running, but they're not down on the floor with you grinding, going through the mud, getting it out of the mud. And that's why coworkers typically like who they work with not like where they work at and that's because you are building in that relationship and sometimes yeah you have classes with them but what gets you through right what gets you through working at a job that you don't like but you like the people that you work with and you might come into conflict with them but you are always constantly building with them trying to get to the goal of getting through your shift and making sure whatever you do nursing whatever job you're building towards something so you have that common goal but when we don't replicate that in our relationships again you have a failure to launch 
But two parents are dedicated to their children not being in a single parent household. They're going to continuously build a relationship that's built on. We're not going to be departing. We're going to always realign ourselves to making sure that our children have us together functionally and non-toxic. That don't mean you're not going to fight. That just means that you understand there's something greater than your own feelings and little emotions that you have at the time because you have other people relying on you for leadership. The functionality and the fluidity of you building generational wealth, owning properties, owning land, owning IULs, owning multifamily units, having tangible assets will be disrupted if you decide that the I is more important than the we. If you stop building, then the house will be unbuilt, unfinished. Now, I don't know about you, but how do you feel about buying a house that's been unfinished and you're just buying it sightseeing? How does that house look to you? Now, a new construction, fully constructed, looks very much more appealing if I were to buy that house than a house that don't got a daggone roof on it. Because it has not been finished that's what it's like when you have a relationship that is not that is that is stop building together the construction has not been finished but when you're dedicated to the building process now every beautiful home you've ever been in or looked at or whatever else ask the people who built it was it all fun and, and good and glamorous and glitz when you see that house built that is the outcome the details was the guy who got injured because he fell off of a beam. The guy who came in and put in what is now your living room when he was sick. Or he missed his kid's violin practice because your bathroom needed to be installed. You don't see that part when you go and sign a mortgage and build in the house because those are in the details. You're living on the outcome. A fully house paid off when you pay off your mortgage, that's great, but that's the outcome. Nobody told you about how you, had, nobody nobody asked about how many doubles or how much overtime you had to work in order to get that house paid off, how many times you might have not had property tax bill, or how many times you went with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to get that home paid off, or how many times you had to rent out a spare bedroom. You, nobody asked you about those details, why? Because they only see your outcomes. That's all they see. But again, when you, you know why you appreciate a house that's paid off? You know why people appreciate owning a piece of property from ancestry lands? It's because they built a relationship from me messaging them, telling them their invoices due, messaging them, telling them, hey, I sent you a message, your invoices due. Here's your balance. Hey, Phil Davis wrote a book. Uh, getting dollars from dirt on Amazon, a beginner's guide to vacant land investing. Hey, you know what? I'm going to buy the book and read the book. So I understand what I need to do to build because he created a book to offer value and knowledge to me. So that way, when I look to build, I understand why he sold this particular property to me. You know why? Because the properties in California city have water in front of them because they have access to power. And because he knew a long time ago, LA was going to get so expensive, so overrun, so downtrodden that we needed to find another place that's affordable in the future to look to build. But I still got people in the chats talking about, oh, this is desert. At Las Vegas that you go and visit to was a desert at one point. When Beanie Siegel, Bugsy Siegel, sorry, Bugsy Siegel was going out there and investing and looking at uh, doing in Vegas, he saw what Vegas is today. He didn't buy it when it was Vegas today for billions and trillions of dollars. He had a vision. And most people see the dirt, but they don't see the vision behind the dirt. When I first started buying pieces of property, my wife didn't see my vision. She just saw that that was it, just the, the, just the dirt. And now it's different because it's hundreds of properties. It's thousands of dollars a year in ta property tax bills that we got to pay. It's money we owe in taxes because we generate more than what we pay. We're not W-2s only. That's it. Because I've evolved past just being a, a 401k employee. And she sees me adding on to that. 
because I'm still building my individual worth to her as a husband. I haven't stopped at a job, gotten fat, and just decided I'm just gonna ride the rest of my life out because now I'm married to miserable. No, I'm gonna keep on improving so she can see that she has a man who's increasing his value. I am building my own value. She sees me working on a house. I went to work and told someone, yeah, my wife makes me uh, dinner when I get home. Makes you dinner? Does she have a choice? Yes, she has a choice. But I never had to ask. Do you understand why? Because I'm building my value. That's why you're single and don't have a value. Your value is in your job. <laughs> my wife's value and my values on our family. It's two different things. Because if I lose my job today, I, I worked in California, now I work in Pennsylvania. Jobs change. So you can't place a value on something that's transient, that could change at any time. You've gotta put your value on something that's greater than yourself. My value is in my children's academic success. I've got people in my family that are teachers. Their children aren't gifted. And I'm gonna be say it because I'm proud of my own children through their own hard work. And the other people whose kids didn't become gifted, you know why? It's because they didn't apply themselves. And when I told them stuff, hey, went over their head. They had it. And these are people who are teachers. And it's not saying my kids are better than them, but again, they didn't get the outcomes because they didn't apply themselves in the same way that I was doing. And I didn't get the results once, I got them twice. Because I always got toy, told boys are, are harder, girls are easy to do academic. Well, what happens when my son did it? Well, he got skipped. And again, it's no secret. They're not overly bright. I didn't graduate cum alum, cum, uh, uh, summa cum laude from any place. I didn't go to MIT. What I did was put a process in place through living in a resource-rich area, through getting private tutors, and being having a wife and a husband that could be home for a certain amount of time to administrate and show my kids the building blocks of processes and systems they needed to have in place in order to be successful. And then we kept building on that. Interest, land, working in a business, building a business. My wife started off as a simple personal trainer, training one or two clients, now understanding what write-offs are. She's now looking at talking with the tax person about how to do more rentals. And hell, my wife did more with it than I did. I just sent in the uh, W-2s and the, uh, the 1099s and Schedule Cs. That's all I did. She was finding out what what uh, the amount of uh, rent, or, you know, mortgage that could be written off and space and all of that stuff. How much percentage? Two, three years ago, seven years into the marriage, that never happened. But it seems being built upon. Because what, we went through a year, a week, a few years ago, we owed 60,000 in taxes, paid off very quickly in a matter of a month because we had it, because we've been building. Now, it was a little stressful, but she had to take an education and understand why she was getting refunds to now why she owed taxes. And that's because you made profit. And again, I had the capital. Go back to my previous videos. Again, this education and knowledge that you're having now is a cumulative education based upon previous videos. They all connect. This is the Ancestry Lands universe you're in, the extended universe, folks. The A-L-E-U, Ancestry Lands Extended Universe, where it all connects. Pay attention, folks, take some notes, Make sure you get some of this information so you can pass it down generationally. Because by the time you see my children exceed and excel and they become a blip on your radar, you done missed all this formula that's been making them where they are now. If you have a formula, a system, you can adopt my system, my formula, and then make it your own and you should get similar results if you follow the process. I'm upset, I'm charged, man, I'm charged. Highly charged. Highly charged right now. Because again, you only got one life to make it work. One life. And instead of sitting here thinking that you're something different, why don't you show me you're different then? Show me your results. 
I've got people right now, I'm putting together something to get people together, to get more black men together, to talk about things, to educate people who they're already telling you communities will be poor. They're already bringing in our replacements. They're already showing you on Zillow. They got rooms for rent. Now, yes, folks, I heard it today. You, you can go on the Zillow to look for a room for rent. You don't got to go to Facebook or Craigslist or anywhere else. You go right on Zillow. They'll rent a room where you can get somebody to come in, pay $1,200 to rent one room out and eat up all the food in your refrigerator. Hell, you might as well charge the kids for that. And that's what we've gone through. Because we've had generations of people with greed taking it for themselves and not educating down. That's why academia is full of just basic useless knowledge that we don't need to function in life. When's the last time you've seen kids learn about monetary or fiscal policy? How the government's run? 401k. Hell, most people can argue why they want to have a job with a 401k. They don't even know the first thing about a 401k. Half of them don't even know how much is in 401k. And now we got all this effort, education, information, technology coming out, talking about what 401ks were originally designed for. Now you got IULs coming to the forefront. How long have IULs been in place? Index Universal Life Insurance. Look it up or holler at me and message me if you're interested. And I am licensed in several states as an insurance producer. life and accident and health because I am also in the medical field. I don't just do land. I do life insurance too as well. You need a term? Let me know. I got you. Who do I work for? I'm non-captive. Look it up. You ain't got to ask me. I'll find you the best policy because I don't have to be. I, I'm, I'm free agent when it comes to this. <sighs> Folks, my book is available on Amazon. Getting Dollars from Dirt by Philip H. Davis Jr. And I mean Jr. Because there's many that come before me, but they're not like me. Like 50 Cent said, you're not like me. People think that wealth is built on just, you know, uh, just a, a bunch of bricks of one house, but they don't have liquidity. They don't have the results to show that wealth extends beyond yourself. You don't have any power of influence. None of it. You're not amassing anything. What you're doing is hoarding gold for yourself. Yeah, you look at Lord of the Rings, right? Lord of the Rings, uh, Desolation of Smog, right? All that gold smog sitting on, that dragon sitting on, no one can access it. So he just sits there and high and sits on his gold and sleeps and slumbers so he can just pride himself on being the owner of gold, which is, means nothing because it's not being used. Everybody wants to have all this money in the bank, but money really doesn't mount to anything if it's not utilized, grown, and scaled up to create something else. I'm charged today, folks, as you can see. I'm charged. But you know what? I'm more than happy enough to make these videos to talk with you. And I do it because you can hear me pontificate while I'm driving. You ain't got to look at my black face. You ain't got to look at nothing about me. You don't even got to like me. You don't. I don't care if you do. But one thing I do is have knowledge to help you. Because you know why, folks? Because I'm living it. I'm doing it. Don't make me better than you. It just makes me a person that's trying. I don't need to fake it till I make it. I ain't never got out of a car that ain't mine. You ain't seen me in no Lambo. I never told you I owned a home. I own hundreds. And I do mean a hundred properties I have owned. My wife and I, since we've been married, have put at least a hundred properties under title and deed of ownership. I've employed people, women, and men. I employ my children currently. I I employ uh, minorities, and I've been able to do this while being a nurse. And I made more money as a, as, as a, as a landowner than I have my entire nursing career. I've had more power of influence through owning land, more conversations with people high up in the world because I own land, not because I saved somebody doing CPR and I sent them down to IU, ICU. I've saved lives too as well, but it's part of that journey is why what brought me here now. And I'm telling you folks, you got one life, one life to make this work, one life. 
What are you going to do? One life. I'm your host, Philip Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com, folks. It's passion that you hear. Passion. Because one day I may not be here and my children need to hear this message. They hear it at home, but they may not, they may, I may not be alive the day they understand the message. But the message is always going to be here, folks. <sighs> my book on Amazon, Getting Dollars from Dirt. You see my picture on the back. A Beginner's Guide to Vacant Land Investing. It's only like $16, $17, folks. All right. 55 pages of what you need to know about owning any piece of real estate. It is a blueprint, a starting point. My children have read the book. A nine and a seven year old read that book with full understanding of what they were reading, folks. I I go on and support it. The link is down in the description in the description section. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and most all share. Share to people. Let them know. Go on Ancestry Lands. We're on all social media platforms too, folks. I'm your host, Philip Davis. I hope you have been educated, enlightened, and maybe you've been entertained, all right? Take care, folks. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm out. Are you curious about the secrets behind those who have made fortunes through vacant land investments? Look no further. We have the perfect solution just for you. Introducing Getting Dollars from Dirt, a beginner's guide to vacant land investing. This extraordinary book serves as your ultimate resource if you aspire to make a significant impact in the real estate market. Inside, you will uncover time-tested strategies and expert tips that will effortlessly guide you through the realm of vacant land investing, regardless of your experience level. Bid farewell to perplexing terminology and overwhelming information overload. This book has been meticulously crafted to offer practical steps that will kickstart your journey toward financial independence. Discover the art of recognizing the most lucrative vacant land opportunities. Getting dollars from dirt leaves no stone unturned. You will acquire the confidence and knowledge necessary to make shrewd investment decisions. Secure your copy of Getting Dollars from Dirt today and embark on your path to wealth. Click the link in the description below to order your copy now. Don't delay another moment, begin constructing your fortune today.